so session has started so uh, hi everyone this is uh, session 6 for uh, python programming uh, which is also the last session for uh, the python programming uh, module that we have in the previous session uh, we discussed about the concepts of uh, object oriented programming for uh, classes objects encapsulation polymorphism inheritance abstraction and what were the benefits of using them <clears throat> in session 6 we have the learning objective for uh, getting familiar with uh, list comprehensions uh, lambda functions then using the uh, filter map and sort uh, sorted from uh, functions using lambda function as an argument and uh, also we learn about uh, modules and packages so starting with uh, list comprehensions uh, a very easy way to define it is a concise way of uh, creating a list with an existing iterable so let's start with uh, a question that uh, let's say we want to write a program which creates a list of squares from number 1 to 10 or 1 to 9 so for that what we used to do before in a in a our familiar way that uh, for the things that we have discussed is uh, that we used to create an empty list and uh, save it for, uh, for a variable name here we uh, we are using squares as it is descriptive of what we are trying to do then use a for loop and uh, iterate through each and every element for the range uh, that we have uh, that uh, that we have de uh, decided so uh, as we want a, a list of squared numbers from 1 to 9 so we are using the range function on on that we are giving the argument of 10 or giving the value 10 and then what we are doing is uh, using the squares and using the append function to append the values with all the each and every squares for the range that we have provided so what will do what it will do is that uh, it will go for the first element square it and uh, append it into the list named squares then go to the and then check whether it's smaller than the range that we have provided yes it is so it will go to 2 then square it and append it to the list again and then it will go on till we get to the condition that uh, 10 is that 9 is smaller than 10 but uh, when it goes to 10 it will not do it as it's uh, 10 equals to 10 and that's why the execution stops there and in the end what we do is uh, simply print the list squares now it does become a kind of a verbose thing to do if we use a, if we are uh, aware of uh, list comprehensions so what do list comprehensions to us is that you can see that we are almost using four lines of code in order to achieve what we want but what does list comprehension do is that it it presents the the use of a list in a very concise way or what we want to do so we have squares and defining the and defining it within the list and uh, we have a certain expression which starts with uh, x uh, raised to the power of 2 for x in range 10 now this this line of code will also yield the same result as uh, this code that we have that we have used which is a uh, very uh easy to understand but uh, as we are moving further we will be uh, using a uh, more easier and uh, an advanced way to implement things so uh, it it will yield the same kind of list that uh, this from uh, this program that we have wrote, written so let's uh, uh, get used to the syntaxes and stuff uh, for the list comprehension 
So for the syntax of uh, list comprehension, uh, there is an expression first, and then we we start with the for loop and the element that we are using. So item in the iterable that we are trying to use any kind of collection like uh, list, tuple, etc. And then an if condition if we want a further condition to uh, be used. So uh, regarding the expression, expression is used to describe what should be included in the new list and it can involve variables and more complex operations. It represents any valid Python expression including variables, calculations and function calls. So uh, let's start with a bit of a, a simpler way of uh, understanding list comprehensions. So what we are trying to do in example one is that uh, we create a list of even numbers for from zero to nine. Now, for that we are creating an, uh, a list called events. And within that list, uh, what we are doing is uh, uh, stating an expression. So X for X in range 10, which comes for our for loop and then an if condition in order to check whether they are uh, even or not. So uh, x modulo two equals to equals to zero is the uh, condition that checks for the whether the it whether the numbers are even or not. And then in the end, when the list is created, it will it sim uh, we simply print it print it out. Now going to example two. We have two lists for list one and list two and their respective elements. Then what we are trying to do is uh, create a summation uh, in the list sum. And we are using two expressions, uh, two expressions here, or uh, you can say two uh, variable names in order to achieve uh, what we want. Uh, before that, we just uh, used uh, to uh, sing a single variable uh, here and here. So this is just uh, for getting to know that we can use uh, other variables as well. So sums and uh, so first uh, we start with the expression, what we want to do, then a for loop in order to iterate through it. So for X in list one and for Y in list two, they have to sum it. And then in the end, uh, printing the sums, we get the summation of uh, both the list. Now creating a list of tuples where each tuple contains a number and its label. So uh, this was a, a regarding two list, but now what we are trying to do is uh, kind of have a dictionary kind of uh, representation to it having a number and its label so uh, first is uh, we are uh, calling it list instead of list so less and then uh, our first expression which is i and then even numbers if uh, i is uh, divisible by two or is uh, an even number else odd and then what we want this expression to uh, work under is only within the range of uh, 0 to 8. So for i in range 8, what all this want, we want to do want is to check whether it's even or odd and label them accordingly. So after uh, creating this list of lists, um, we'll iterate through the numbers and labels of uh, it. So we'll be using a for, for loop. Uh, for, uh, uh, for number and label and list and then print it, uh, print it out, uh, print them out accordingly for numbers and labels. Then comes the nested list. 
just a second, let me go through that. So uh, our list uh, comprehensions uh, example started with uh, this uh, simple implementation of a squared list. So we created the uh, an empty list and then we went uh, for the range 0 to 10 or 10 or in range 10 we went through to append the square of uh, all the elements till 10 into the list square and then in the end we printed the result. So this is the list that we get for it. After that, we implemented the same uh, uh, with the same objective, but in a different manner uh, using the list comprehensions. So for that, we used squares and then for x, x square, our first expression in the list comprehension and then a for statement. So for or follow. So for x, in range 10 and it will it yield yield the same uh, list but in a very concise way or expressing it in a very concise way after that we did it for events uh, x for x in range 10 if uh, it's divisible by 2 or is even an even number uh, we only uh, so the list will only consist of uh, even numbers so this is the output to this one this part of block on this block of code and the next one was uh, having two lists uh, added together into the list sum so first the expression then comes the for statement for iterating through the list or any kind of collection and then printing the result or the list. So for this block of code, this is the output that we get. So uh, the last one is a uh, uh, this time I'm just naming the list list list. So first we go for the uh, we we define the uh, expression which is only i. I will be even if it satisfies this condition of uh, being divisible by two, else it is odd. And what we want this to be calculated under is under a range of 8. So for that range, uh, we want to see which, were, which are the even numbers and the odd numbers. And then for iterating through what we have created in the list, we are going through numbers and labels in list. And print uh, and just to uh, have it have a formatted uh, formatted string to print it out. So when we print it, these this is the output that we get for it. So starting from zero to seven, as the range is eight. So after that, we move on to the nested loops, uh, nested for loops for uh, list comprehensions. So first, we for oh, so what we'll try to do is uh, use mat uh, or try to construct a matrix. So for that, we'll uh, use an entry list for matrix and then uh, use a for state uh, for loops in order to generate that uh, matrix.
<clears throat> so for i in range five, so we are working with in range five and then append, <clears throat> append to the list. What, what would we append? So for that, we are creating another list within the for loop with uh, j within the range five. So from zero to four, we'll be having uh, four elements, each iterating through other. So first, we, so our matrix is first element, which we are denoting by i, will be consisting of uh, numbers 0 to 5 uh, 0 to 4 which will be which each of them will be represented by j so first we will be creating the first element of uh, i or the matrix so matrix i and then appending it so so 0 to 4 will be the first element that will be appended to the first element of matrix and then we move on to the next and so on till we meet the range of uh, i for the range 5 and we'll, when we print it we get the matrix generated through the for loops that we have created or the nested for loops that we have used <coughs> Now, using the list comprehension, you can see the lines of code that we have to use, use for both of them without and with list comprehension. So now we will be using the same matrix matrix as a list. And for start, we will be using the we're starting with the innermost, so the innermost loop. So uh, j for j in range five, which which kind of makes the structure for the elements in uh, matrix which are represented by i. So j for j in range five, and for each and every element of uh, i being represented by that, and now those whole elements will be used for range 5 so when we print it you can see that outputs of both of the codes are same and this and this is going to be the output for both the codes but uh, you can see the amount of uh, lines or the lesser code or the way uh, the list comprehension makes it very concise and easier to understand once you get familiar with the use of uh, list comprehensions, uh, the expression and understanding the what the uh, statement wants to tell us, it becomes easier. Now we'll test the performance. Of why do we use? Uh, uh, why don't we use a for loop and list comprehensions? So for the for testing that, uh, we'll be using a a module called time and uh, as a, it is very easy to uh, use a time module in order for in order uh, for us to time the execution of uh, both the programs so let's say uh, the, uh, so we are making a, an empty list square and then the way we have used a for loop in order to to make a list for range 10 We'll be using the list comprehension also for us to make another list, and we'll see how both of them uh, are executed in what time. So, uh, regarding the mod, uh, so we are already familiar with the for loop uh, execution of the squares and the list comprehensions. So, uh, so let's just. Uh, um, uh, talk a bit about the time module so how it what we'll do is that we'll give a variable which saves the starting time of it 
so time time is the way to use it as uh, you have seen that begin equals to time time and then once the execution of the that part of the code is ended we use it and equals to time time again and the values that we get for those in for those uh, at those time for the time time values we will just simply deduct uh, and minus begin and you can see in the in the print statement, you, I have also multiplied it with a thousand in order for us to uh, convert the milliseconds into seconds. The same thing is done for uh, begin one and end one for time time in order to use the model and uh, take out the time. So end minus begin and uh, get the code, get the time. So first was the expression of this, which uh, we got uh, this as an output. So this one marks as the i, uh, sorry, uh, j for the i that we have used. This whole is j. And after the first element, so this, this is appended into the list over here. And then again, it checks for this range as it satisfied this condition it will uh, it will keep on appending until we get five uh, five equals to five condition as uh, that is not the as it does not as uh, it does not go for four uh, go for five but rather stops at four so it will stop at four now for the same condition given in different way uh, this is how we do it and this is a, a output that we get for it. Now comes the uh, usage of the uh, performance of the loop and list. We created a square and then uh, appended our result for that. And we also timed using begin and end. And we did the same for our list comprehension. We use begin one and end one as the as the variable to capture that time and print it. So you can see that when we run this block of uh, run this whole cell, we are getting the squares of uh, the list and also the time. You can see that uh, uh, this is the time that we get for uh using the traditional way or more simpler way of uh, for loops but when we use the list comprehension the time doesn't even come in the in this of course uh, there will be a particular time but for the format that we have used for the thousand uh, by multiplying it to thousand we are getting this So uh, not uh, using list comprehensions not only makes uh, or makes the uh, makes the statement very concise, but also makes uh, it faster. Now, what we are doing here is uh, only square of uh, square of uh, uh, numbers within the range ten. But uh, imagine using a data set and then. Uh, using the list comprehensions uh, it uh, you can also see that uh, there can, there will be difference for it now comes the lambda functions <clears throat> so lambda functions these are functions that are defined without a name a concise way of uh, creating a small function with a single expression they can keep uh, they can accept any number of arguments but are limited to a single expression so if there is a an expression which uses many arguments that's okay but we cannot use uh, many expressions um, we are only limited to a single one 
they help in keeping their simple task readable and easy to implement where having a full function makes the code more verbose so it kind of acts as a convenient thing to use uh, lambda when uh, we are uh, trying to simply state the function or uh, making a more dedicated function doesn't make sense uh, at that time in those times you can use a lambda function so for syntax of lambda uh, we start with the keyword lambda and then uh, use the arguments that it takes and the expression that we want to evaluate it to so for a very simple example for example one you can see that uh, we have used uh, variables x y z for the values one two three we are using a list and uh, using a variable this then using the lambda expression so lambda and the arguments that it takes and the expression that we want to use so we want to simply sum the uh, we simply want the summation of the uh, variables or the values that these variables hold so when we print using the list and uh, x y z or the give uh, for the given or the arguments for the list it will simply add the numbers or give us the output for the added numbers the same goes for uh, example 2 for square and the multiplication there is a lambda the argument that it takes and the expression that we want these uh, arguments to be used in the expression and when we print it for the uh, with the arguments we get the uh, output that we want so 8 square is uh, 64 and then uh, the the multiplication of uh, arguments 2 and 3 uh, evaluating it to 6 then comes uh, uh, using lambda function in dictionaries so let's say there is a, a people uh, a list of people and each of them have a key value pair of name and age having their own individual values uh, key uh, key values so what we are using is uh, what we are simply doing uh, over here is using a lambda function as a, a way to sort the or arrange the values that we have for the list in people so you can see that uh, the values in the pe uh, people are not arranged in a way so so the sorted people makes use of the sorted uh, function and uses lambda as the key expression in order to sort people so first it takes the it so the sorted function basically what it does is it, it takes the first uh, first argument as iterable then we assign a key uh, which is uh, lambda over here and then uh, using the lambda function of person and what we want the expression to do is simply use age as the sorting element so uh, for for the list person we are using person person's age then comes uh, the sort sort list using the list so print person for person in sorted people and the output that we get is uh, our uh, sorted numbers uh, sorted key value pairs for the values So we started our uh, lambda expression, uh, lambda's uh, introduction with uh, the simple implementation of a summation of three variables and their three variables and three variables and their values and simply returning the 
uh, or getting sorry not returning simply getting the values of uh, that summation whenever we print them with the our arguments that it takes then comes for uh, for a square and multiplication as well using the lambda lambda function then the argument that it takes and the expression that it evaluates to so you can see when when we run this cell we get the answer 6 for this summation then 64 for the square and the multiplication 6 then come list of dictionaries so we have a dictionary of a key value pair over here for Bob, Bob and uh, age 25, Alice and age 30, Charlie and age 35. So for that, so uh, we are using the sorted uh, sorted function, which takes uh, people as uh, an iterable. Then for this, we uh, define a lambda function. person and what it does is uh, use age as the sorting element so you can see that uh, we so this this statement doesn't uh, print so for just simply printing it we are using this uh, sort list in order to <coughs> iterate through the sorted people list that we have created using the sorted function so it simply iterates through the list for the results that we have in a sorted manner. <clears throat> now, using the filter map and uh, sorted functions, using the lambda functions within it. So. They all operate by taking a function and an iterable or iterables as an input, like a, a list and stuff. So lam uh, lambda functions shine when you when used in con conjunction with higher order functions like filter, map, and sorted. These functions take another function as an argument, making lambda functions their perfect companion for concise and readable code. So uh, this sorted uh, sorted function over here kind of uh, uh, tells us how lambda can be used with these functions uh, in order to make a very desirable uh, output with with a very concise manner. So starting with the filter function, the filter function is used to create a, an iterator from from the elements of an iterable for which a function returns true. So for, let's say there is a list and for all the elements, uh, there is a function that we have defined. If it defi uh, if the values come out true for certain elements or for the elements, the, uh, the value comes out to be true, those values will be filtered out, filtered. So, for the syntax of the filter function, uh, first argument it takes is a, a function itself, and then the iterable or the sequence. So, function that tests if uh, each element of a sequence is true or not, and the sequence uh, which needs to be filtered, it can be sets, sets, uh, sets, lists, tuples, or containers of any iterator. So, a very example. Uh, uh, an example for a filter function, uh, you can see that is a list of numbers from one to six. We are creating another list uh, using the filter function. And within that, we are using the first uh, first argument as a lambda function. So lambda x equals to x modulo two, uh, which is a simple uh, check for uh, whether it's even or not. And then, uh, and using it on numbers using that expression on the iterable numbers and all of that will be converted into list using the list method so when we print even numbers we will get the output of 246 
for the list that we have. Then comes the map function. Using map function with the lambda functions, the map function applies a given function to all items in an input list. A lambda function used with map allows simple transformation to be applied to each element in a collection. So syntax to the map function is it takes a function first as an as a first argument and then the iterable. So the function to execute for each item, that's what the function represents. Then the iterables, the sequence collection or an iterator object. You can send as many iterables as you like. Just make sure that the function has one parameter for each iterable. So uh, we'll be using a simple list again called numbers. Then we are using the squared numbers. Now what we are doing is you mapping the function on each and every element of the iterable, so called it, calling it map function, and creating a list out of it. So uh, when we list or when we simply print the squared numbers, we are getting the squared numbers. What, uh, what the map function is uh, taking as an argument, uh, first is uh, our uh, lambda function of uh, of storing the squares of each and every element which are saved in or which are stored in the numbers list. So for the output that, <coughs> so when we uh, print the squared numbers, uh, you can see in the comment that uh, this, the output is uh, 1491625. Now comes the sorted. Uh, we kind of saw sorted in a uh, in a program before. So using sorted with the lambda functions, the sorted function stores the items of a given iterable in a specific order. Default by default, the sorted function is uh, will give us an ascending order and returns a new sorted list. Lambda functions can be used as a key argument in the sorted list, uh, sorted function to define custom sorting logic. So for syntax of the sorted function, uh, first is the iterable. This time it's the iterable. Uh, for the other two, the first uh, arguments of our function. So in sorted, the first uh, argument is iterable, then comes the key the way uh, which decides how we want to sort it and then a reverse whether we want it ascending or descending as a as in the mentioned as in this as the statement mentioned before that by default it's ascending so the reverse value is a boolean value which is false by default so about the iterable uh, it is a required argument the se the sequence to sort list uh, dictionary tuple etc then comes the key which is an optional thing a uh, function to execute to decide the order by default it's none and then comes a, a reverse uh, which is an optional argument which takes a boolean type as an input and or true and false as an input false is will sort for ascending and true will sort for descending by default the value is false now you can use a sort on a very simple num only containing number list and you can try it out for yourself for the sorted. Uh, in this example, because it's a very, uh, it becomes a very simple thing, uh, I have kind of used a, a bit different uh, example for that. So we are using a list containing tuples of, uh, uh, containing tuples of uh, an item and a value to it. So uh, sorted fruits will, so, uh, will use the sorted function. What it will take, the first argument that we take is a triple, and then the key becomes the lambda function. So here we'll use the lambda with the, uh, with the arguments that we are going to use. What we are going to use is only one argument, which is X, 
and what how we want to use it is that we want the second value so 0 1 remember the indexing thing 0 1 so what we want to do is uh, inside the fruits it uh, fruits list the zeroth index is uh, apple orange and banana for the three elements that it holds the second elements are the values so we are accessing that value using x1 so 251 and in that order it will be sorted so when we print the sorted fruits we will get the values of banana apple and orange for the values that uh, they are with in the tuple so we started our uh, uh, introduction to the uh, filter map and sorted using lambda functions with filter as first so what it uh, what does filter function do? It simply it iterates through an iterable, and for all the values of which uh, comes out to be true, it uh, filters those values or keeps those values in a way. So we started with a sim simple example of uh, uh, numbers from one to six. Then we want to uh, we want to have only a list which uh, contains even numbers so we used a filter and used a first lambda function and going through the iterable and all of this being converted by the list in, into a list using list and when we print the even numbers these are the numbers that we get as these are the only ones that are even for the list that we have Next is a map function. What, what the map function does is it simply maps a function to the iterables objects or the elements within the iterable, like list and stuff, and perform a transformation to it, or perform an operation to it, or allows a simple transformation to be applied to each element in the collection. So this is the syntax for the map. And this is the list that we used. Uh, we are using another uh, squared numbers as list. And as a map uh, takes function as the first argument, we takes, uh, we define a lambda function and then iterable numbers. And we'll, we print it. This is the output that we get for this, uh, for using the map function of squaring using the lambda function on the numbers list then comes sorting the syntax for sorting which is the first it takes a triple okay first it takes a triple then the key and the reverse now key and reverse are actually optional arguments uh, reverse uh, reverse takes only boolean uh, key uh, boolean values now a key can take a function as a way to uh, how how we want to sort it so for that we used uh, uh, fruits sorted fruits contain the sorted function which take which took iterable as the first argument then our lambda function which accessed the second value of the tuples within the list and depending on these values it sorted the fruits out so when we printed the sorted fruits this is the output that we get in a sorted manner banana bun apple two orange five Now let's uh, let's start with uh, modules and packages in Python. So modules are what are modules and what are Python? Uh, what are packages? We'll go through them one by one. So modules 
models are collection of uh, functions variables and classes defined in a single file which can be imported and used in other programs or files what purpose does it, uh, it serve and why do we need a module so let's answer uh, let's uh, use an analogy for it let's say we want to open an engine and uh, for that we need a toolbox to open it or various kind of uh, uh, drivers and stuff in order to open uh, an, an engine some will fill a certain kind of uh, specific use to it also so let's say we have a toolbox and each uh, and the whole toolbox contain a different kind of uh, uh, drivers and uh, tools um, which have their own specific functionality to it so in the toolbox we we will have pliers, spanners, screwdrivers, etc. Each tool has its own work, its own functionality. We'll use them where they can be used. We grab the toolbox and use the tool that we want. Now, the toolbox containing only pliers, only spanners, and only screwdrivers uh, can be imagined as a module. You can see that uh, there are certain uh, compartments within the toolbox, uh, within the whole uh, tool setup as well. So uh, you can see that uh, there are only pliers, there are only screwdrivers, uh, or a different kind of uh, a single category of tool. So you can imagine that as a module, e each one of them. So hammer, screwdrivers, and pliers are like the functions, variables, and classes within a module their own respective model also. So getting a specific tool from the toolbox is like importing and using specific function or classes from a module. So when we are using screwdriver, you, we are using the, uh, for example, we are using a, a screwdriver as a module. When we are using a spanner, we are using spanner as a module and taking a certain kind of functionality from the spanners module, using it and keeping it back. Just using it. So continuing with this analogy, let's create a single file, which contains uh, uh, these uh, uh, definition of uh, small programs, uh, uh, small functions, not even programs, uh, small functions. So what we'll do is uh, uh, we are defining a function called hammer which returns uh, its sound whenever used then comes the spanner which returns open bolts then screwdrivers which uh, twists and then uh, for pliers it grips tightly so pliers is a class uh, remember uh, so just for the change we have used uh, pliers as a class now uh, we want now in an empty file we want to define these uh, uh, functions and class and then in, we want to name it tools.py and save it in the folder or a directory as uh, as the same uh, in the same folder or directory where we are uh, we have saved our program and that's the way you you uh, you make a module so so for using the module open a new file and import the module you created <clears throat> so for that we'll use a and a module use dot py file then import the system module and give it a path for the directory that we have used uh, or uh, saved our module then from that we'll import uh, tools hammer screwdrivers and pliers just in case you want to check the module and when we use uh, the print statements it outputs to the uh, return statement that it gives and for pliers as remember we used uh, pliers as a class so we created it create its first object my, my pliers and then use its function 
called grep. So when we use that function, it outputs to grip tightly. Okay. So this is the, uh, these are the functions and a uh, class. And these are the statements that it gives. Now, for example, you can uh, you can see that uh, for sys, uh, we will import the sys module and then use a sys dot path and then append the path that we have like this for from wherever you are we are using it and after that we can use the module like this so from tools as uh, you remember we named it tools.py so from tools we imported the uh, functions that we created hammer screwdriver and a class called pliers for hammers and screwdrivers when we print these are the outputs that we are expecting the same goes for pliers uh, sorry uh, first we have to create an instance for the pliers and after that we have to uh, use its uh, function so we created my pliers and then we used uh, its uh, method sorry not function method so we used its method grip and it all printed the way we expected it to grip tightly for tires twist for a screwdriver and bang for hammer Now comes to uh, now. Let's start with packages. So a package is a collection of related modules that work together to provide certain functionality. These modules are contained within a folder and can be imported just like any other module. So this folder will often contain a special init file that tells Python that it is a package and potentially containing more modules nested within subfolders. So Python packages offer a more advanced level of organization beyond single, like, single file modules, enabling the structure of Python's modules namespace using dotted module names. A package in, a package in Python is essentially a directory that contains a special file named init dot py file the this init you uh, this is the same that we have this is the same init uh, uh, portion that we have uh, described about in the previous statement and it uses double underscores uh, bef before and after the init keyword which may also include one or more modules or even sub packages the interpreter recognizes a package when it contains that init dot py file so here is a, a very simple example for a tic-tac-toe package so the package just name is tic-tac-toe and it will contain an init file that uh, the way we have uh, mentioned over here that's how python recognizes that uh, it is a, a package so it will contain its init file init.py file then after that it will also it can also contain sub packages as, as we have also mentioned so it, uh, the sub, pack, uh, sub packages are display logic uh, display and logic over here and these sub packages will also have their own init file uh, which are organized in their own functional way so display contains all the functionality to it uh, functionality that is related to display then comes the logic, which is uh, another sub package where uh, init.py is uh, the file that, pres and that is present and uh, which contains the logic behind the tic tac toe uh, uh, game. 
now you can see that uh, it is uh, the two player dot py it says that it is a module so uh, packages are a collection of modules and there can be another sub packages as well like for this tic tac toe we have sub packages of uh, display and logic also if we go for our for a package being a directory this is the example a uh, screenshot to it and this is how you can find uh, an init.py within it so let's create our own package so first uh, we want to create a folder called uh, Oh, you can call it whatever, but uh, if you want to follow along uh, uh, to this uh, video, you can uh, do the exact same thing that are uh, described in this. And just in case if you miss out uh, something, you can also refer it back to the videos that we post on YouTube. So uh, first is uh, create a folder with package name. Example package, uh, I've used example package uh, as the folder's name. Then inside that, name the same uh, give the same name that we have used and create a subfolder with that name now uh, as we have used a tools.py as our module that we just created you can move that uh, to the subfolder uh, just uh, in order to have uh, any kind of uh, .py file of a module now there are two steps one contains uh, uh, the steps for the subfolder and the another contains the steps for the main folder or the uh, parent folder. So steps for the first folder, you uh, use the idle in a scripting mode and then save save it using the init.py. Uh, make sure that you use a double underscore for the init. Then. Uh, you can define some fun functions or uh, use any kind of comments that you want. Then setting up a setup file for using the package. This setup file allows, uh, allows us to for the installation of the package whenever we want to use them. So right now we are only creating the package. We will make the functionality to make sure that uh, the setup is done in order to use the package uh, in the next slide. So for the first step for the uh, parent folders is that uh, uh, building or creating a setup file. So this uh, this will be called as setup.py in the parent folder. Now in the next step of it, I want you to simply copy and paste uh, these uh, the, uh, this uh, line of code. Wait. You. I given it in the comment uh, in the chat section for of the of it. So what you can do here is that uh, uh, from setup tools, uh, you you have to copy it line by line. The things that you can change over here are the name of the package, but uh, the name of the pack, uh, like. But because I've used example package as the name over here over here from the beginning. That's why I'm using it uh, as the name over here. But uh, whatever name you have decided, you can go with it. Then the version number and the description regarding the package. Then also you can give your own name and the email and the uh, packages or the or your own version for it. Now in the end, you can see that there is a uh, there is an argument called zip safe. Zip safe uh, does nothing but it simply uh, says whether it should be installed in zip 
zip file or a not. So uh, we because we don't want to use it as a compressed file, so we are using zip safe equals to false. So also uh, beneath the line of code, you can read about the uh, zip safe statement. The argument zip safe states whether it will be installed and in zipped, which means compressed mode form or regular mode true for compressed and false for regular installation because we want a regular installation we are using it zip safe equals to false now now comes the installation of the package so open the command prompt and use the cd and which is for current working directory and copy and paste the code uh, I've used an example. You can use your own example over here. And after that, use command pip install module and then space full stop. So after the, uh, after the successful installation of it, you will get the success message and the package will be ready to use. So you can go to the idle again and check the check whether the package is. Uh, package is uh, ready to be used or not so i used a, a small screenshot for the use of the package that uh, we just created so uh, we so i gave it for from example package which is the name of the package uh, import tools then uh, uh, example package is imported uh, was the message that it gives for importing the pa uh, package then I've used the functionalities of tools, which are hammer, screwdriver, and spanner that we used. For importing the Plyers class from uh, example package.tools, uh, you can use it and uh, with the starting of uh, from example package.tools import Plyers. So classes are needed to be imported uh, this way. Then create an instance of that and then we can use the methods that are defined within the class. Now this uh, roadmap goes for any, uh, any pa package or usage of uh, packages and also creating, for, uh, creating it. So one of the famous uh, package for uh, Python is uh, NumPy. So, NumPy is nothing but a, a short for numerical Python, which is a library for numerical computing. So NumPy is an open source library that provides common mathematical and numerical routines through pre-compiled fast functions. NumPy provides the ability to work with multidimensional or n-dimensional arrays which is not natively available in Python. So one of the question arise is that uh, uh, we already have a list data type in Python and why aren't we, which, which is similar to arrays and why aren't we using it? So native Python lists are more flexible, but less efficient for uh, numerical operations and large data sets. NumPy's arrays are specifically optimized for numerical computations and provide functionality for working with multi-dimensional data that native Python list does not offer, as also mentioned in a previous statement. NumPy's and NumPy enables efficient storage and manipulation of large data sets, and it supports a wide range of uh, mathematical and numerical operations on these arrays. So this becomes uh, uh, clear that why do we use a separate package called NumPy instead of using the native view, uh, native data types uh, that are already existing in Python. Now NumPy has uh, 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 many methods. Some of them are sum, dot, mean, max, and square root. As the name is very descriptive uh, of uh, what it does, uh, some it quickly computes the sum of the elements in the array. Then comes dot, which performs a dot product for two arrays. 
mean calculates the average max finds the maximum value in the array then square root calculates the or computes the square root of each element in an array <laughs> so uh, let's <clears throat> let's make use of a uh, number sum with uh, while also comparing it with uh, our native use of list to compute the summation and we will do it for large number in order to get a good result and an efficient uh, uh, difference between why do we use it so uh, first is uh, the example of uh, some method uh, compute the sum of all the elements in the number array much faster than using a loop to some elements in a python list so first we will start with a python list which ranges from 1 to 10 million or something then we will time it using the time time module we will use some uh, some list for summation of the python list or the elements or the values in the python list then print the list it's uh, print the summation itself and also the time it takes so this is not a formulated time so you can directly uh, see how much time does it take it takes some 0.05 for the summation that it does now using the numpy on the right side you can see that uh, uh, we are using a range function and then use in order to make the numpy array for for the same list that we have uh, that we have created for the li uh, list in python then timing it using the start time and end time and also we are printing the result for the summation that it does it did and the time it took so you can see that uh, the uh, there are the time starts with uh, two after the two decimal uh, places whereas uh, for a uh, native implement implementation of a list it start with 0.05 now a similar kind of example we will test the performance of uh, using the list as well as the numpy for the dot products so we will create a two list a list 1 and list 2 list 1 contains 1 to 10001 and list 2 contains 10001 to 2001 then we create a dot product for uh, for it and uh, we time it using the time module start time and end time and in the end we will be printing the value that it uh, created dot product of and also the time it took the same implementation for the numpy we use array 1 and array 2 instead of uh, list 1 and list 2 then time it for the dot product using the numpy dot dot array 1 and array 2 as the arguments and uh, timing the execution so so print printing the actual dot product as well as the time taken so you can see that uh, it uh, the the time taken and the blue part is actually the in the way uh, numpy is uh, uh, going to tell uh, sorry the the time module is going to tell you the time for a uh, exponent of uh, 10 raised to minus 5 and when we simply state it in seconds uh, you can see the difference that is compared so the time for the numpy it starts with uh, starts after four decimal uh, places whereas uh, for a uh, list uh, list execution time it starts with uh, after 
three decimal spaces. So for just uh, small numbers like uh, one to ten thousand and twenty thousand and stuff, you can see that there is a, a difference. So for larger inputs, it can take a lot, uh, and the difference can be very large. And that is the reason that we use a separate module for NumPy and its execution. Now the other three models that we uh, mentioned were mean, max, and square root. So let's uh, quickly discuss a small code for them. So uh, importing NumPy as NP, then creating an array for the squares, or uh, you can simply say 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and then create, uh, creating the mean, max, and square root values of it using the NumPy methods. And then in the end, printing the respective one with the uh, with the uh, statements of array mean, uh, max, and square root. Okay, so just a second. So, so here is the first uh, uh, first execution of it. Uh, we timed it using the time module, and for the introduction of uh, uh, numpies and the comparison made for Python list and uh, numpy. So for this, Python took this uh, amount of uh, time, and you can see that this is the value that we get. Next is for dot arrays using the dot product. We <clears throat> we time we similarly we timed before and after the co uh, functions uh, code block execution and the time that it takes. The reason that I'm using a different notebook uh, over here rather than here is because uh, I'm getting some kind of error and uh, it's written, uh, it's uh, 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 not uh, throwing an error in the uh, separate notebook for the same execution. So that is the reason I'm using different notebook uh, or a separate notebook for that. Then comes the NumPy array uh, summation for the 1 to 10 million, with, uh, for the start and uh, end time for the summation that it makes. And you can see that this. This is the sum that uh, it has calculated. Okay, so this this is the sum that it calculated to. Uh, this uh, it, I'm sorry, ignore this uh, part. Now comes the uh, dot product of it. Okay, sorry, we discussed the dot product, and this is the same implementation in the single book. So. Uh, as I said, uh, which were uh, throwing me errors, so that is the reason I'm not implementing it. Then for the dot product, you can see that uh, it's implementation. For the array one and array two, it takes a uh, np dot for dot product and uh, the arrays as argument and you can see the time it takes and the value that it that the dot product has so 
So like in the slides, uh, we discussed about the comparison of it and also the default by default, how uh, Python gives us the value. So this is the converted one into the seconds. Uh, this is the, sorry, this is the way it actually gives you. So you have to multiply it by thousand and get the answer for it. Now the other functions that we discussed about were mean, max, square root. So for that, we created this list and I used a mean, max, and square root on these on the array that we just created. And when we run the cell, we get the mean of the array. First, uh, first is simply printing the array itself, then uh, uh, mean of the array, then ma max value within the array and also the square root of each and every element that is present in the array. So uh, this marks as the end of uh, this, uh, uh, this batch is uh, session six, which, uh, uh, which uh, started with uh, list comprehensions, lambda functions, uh, uh, filter, map, and uh, sorted using the lambda functions. And also we discussed about the modules, what are modules and how to make one, as well as, uh, as, well as uh, uh, we learned about the packages, how uh, uh, packages are a collection of modules and how to make our own custom package as well. So uh, thanks a lot for attending the uh, session. And now we'll be uh, taking the questions. Thank you. It was nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Vinutha Kanishk, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no. Uh, no questions right now. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, so I will stop the recording.